All right, what I want to look at here is the car on a banked corner. Now, this one's going to end up, believe it or not, having a similar formula to the one we did for the conical pendulum. So, if we look at the um, car going around a banked corner, this is quite extreme, but uh, they do actually do this, don't they? Let's just make it a thing. Call that theta. That's the angle between the um, horizontal and the angle the car is on. So this whole car thing goes around in a big circle. So it's like a track. If we looked from above, it would just be a circular track. But the whole track is on an angle, like one of those race tracks. So when we're looking at this uh, situation here, we've got this interesting as well this interesting thing that at a certain point you don't need any friction here for this car to stay on the track and that's because the forces that would normally drag that car down um, are going to be used with a reaction force from the ramp to produce the centripetal force that keeps the car going in a circle anything goes in a circle it needs that centripetal force which as we've looked at is mv squared over r. So as usual, the only forces we've really got here are mg for the car. What other forces are there? Well, there's the force, the reaction force of the ramp, pushing perpendicular to the ramp, right? So that would be the reaction force from the ramp, or support force if you want to call it that. Um, so that, we'll call it support force. Fs from the ramp and mg are the only forces. So you can already see that this vector diagram is going to look like the one for the conical pendulum, where we've got mg, and we've got a reaction force. And again, the reaction force will continue until we end up with mg is actually the weight force. We'll continue until we end up with that horizontal vector, which is the vector required to keep that car going in a circle and that therefore means that this vector here is equal to mv squared over r so instead of having tension like you have with the conical pendulum you've got a support force all the equations remain the same and if all the equations remain the same then we know that v will be equal to the square root of rg tan theta theta um, in the conical pendulum, it was quite easy to see that theta was the angle between the vertical and the string, right? With this one here, what we're saying is that this angle here, the angle of the ramp, is going to be the same as this angle here. Does that look reasonable? Well, as we decrease the ramp down to zero, the support force goes to the vertical. So these two thetas are exactly the same. Now, there's a few other things we can work out from this once we've got to the point that we've got the whole V equals RG tan theta thing. Um, could we work out the period? Well, the velocity is also equal to 2 pi R over T, right? Distance over time. Time to go around the circle once. So if we equate those two, which we can do, no problem. We can say, well, t equals 2 pi r over v. But v equals that. So it equals 2 pi r over the square root of r g tan theta. And that becomes the time it takes to go around the circle once. Now, if I ask you to do the little maths here and make that formula a little bit nicer, can you do it? What we're saying is, we've got a formula like this. A lot of the physics is this sort of thing. 2 pi r all over square root of r g tan theta. Now, what have I got a problem with here? What I've got a problem with is the fact that we've got an r, okay, and we've got a square root of r. Now, you know you can take all these little guys out when they're multiplied under here. So if I took that square root r out, then it's still a square root of r. And what we basically are saying here is that 2 pi r over square root of r 
times square root of g tan theta. I can say that, right? Now what's r divided by the square root of r? Well, it's just the square root of r. So I could say this is 2 pi square root of r all over square root of g tan theta. Or I can simplify that down and I can say this is all 2 pi times the square root of r over g tan theta. When the formulas get a little bit tricky, they, uh, they often look different and they're exactly the same. So the old banked corner, this would just give you the time it takes the car to go round. Um, what I do like to draw people's attention to with these banked corner situations is that this diagram here is a very special diagram. It's a diagram for when you have exactly the right speed, v equals square root rg tan theta. And at that exact amount of speed, you don't need any friction. You're not going to drift up the ramp, and you're not going to drift down the ramp. You don't need any friction. You could do this on ice. Um, but most of the time, you won't have that exact speed. So if you were going too fast, you tend to go up the ramp, and you'd need a bit of friction down to actually end up doing this. Or if you were going too slow, you'd slide down the ramp, and you'd need some extra friction up the ramp to make this all work out. So this is just one special um, situation. In the scholarship program, we work out the other situations and draw the diagrams and work out, and it's a bit more complicated than this. Uh, what else did I want to say about this? So the speed thing. Ah, yeah. Why? Why is the support force bigger than the component of the weight force that pushes into the ramp? Another good question. Um, and this is due to the fact that uh, because really, the only it should only push back with the same amount of force that you push on it, right? Now, the weight force is the only bit of force pushing down on it. But when you go in a circle on a ramp, as you go around the circle, you are pushing into the ramp. Because you want to go in a straight line, right? That's inertia. So you push into the ramp harder than you would if you weren't on a ramp trying to go in a circle. So the support force pushes back harder. That's why we can get a bigger support force than that component of weight force that's in that direction. Okay, that's banked corners.